We turn now to Senator John McCain, who joins us from Ljubljana, Slovenia. Senator, I want to ask you, you'd like the administration to take a series of steps in Syria to knock out the Syrian Air Force, uh, set up safe zones. It appears from Secretary Tillerson that the administration is not going to do anything more than the actions it already ta uh, has taken. What's your reaction to that? Well, I think what the president did was an excellent first step, and it was a reversal of the last eight years, and I think it was important. But it's now vitally important we develop a strategy, we put that strategy in motion, and we bring about peace in the region. And that obviously means uh, that there has to be a cessation of these war crimes. John, dropping, uh, using chemical weapons is a war crime, but starving thousands of people in prisons is also. Dr uh, barrel bombs, which indiscriminately kill innocent civilians, Pr uh, precision strikes or done by Russians on hospitals in Aleppo are war crimes as well. So uh, there's a lot of war crimes that are taking place. And another er aspect of this that I do not agree with uh, the secretary is that you have to just concentrate on ISIS. We will take Mosul, we will take Raqqa, and we better have strategies as to how to handle those places once we have won it. But they're not disconnected from Bashar Assad and the Al Qaeda and the war crimes that have been taking place. You can't, uh, to a large degree, Bashar Assad, by polarizing the Syrian people, have also given rise to ISIS and Al Qaeda. So uh, they are both connected, and I believe that the United States of America can address both at the same time. We can walk and chew gum. We have the capability. Uh, to do both. And yes, we want a negotiated settlement, but the only way that that'll happen is if it's not in their interest to continue what they've been successful at for over eight years. And that's why I thought symbolically and psychologically the president's action was very important, but now we'd better follow it up. And by the way, we should have cratered the runways. Just to follow up on that, Senator, Secretary of State Tillerson said when I listed uh, those other uh, parts of Syrian efforts that you mentioned, he said w that America needs to, quote, keep its priorities straight and focus on ISIS. But your argument is uh, that uh, taking care of the humanitarian actions that uh, Bashar al-Assad is, is, uh, is taking, that that's a part of the fight against ISIS as well. I think they're totally connected. And also, uh, the, when you see these crimes that are being committed, they're horrifying. John, I also believe that a grieving mother whose child has been killed isn't too concerned whether it's a chemical weapon or a barrel bomb. He's still slaughtering people. And we may stop the chemical weapons, but we've also got to stop the other indiscriminate, inhumane war crimes that are being committed as well. And that means, obviously, trying to set up some kind of safe zone so that these refugees we can have a place where they can be, and also that would help with the refugee flow issue. Senator, you said you had wished that they'd cratered the runways. Based on your assessment of the damage that was taken from the U.S. military action, what kind of a signal do you think that sent uh, to President Assad? Well, I, th I think the fact that we acted was very important, and I support the president's action. And I've been told that there were some recommendations to, to take out all six places that the Syrian Air Force operates out of. Uh, but now that they're flying again, basically, within 36 hours is not a good signal. But I would point out, taking out their, all their support facilities doesn't let them fly with any consi consistency. But it, uh, uh, the signal that they're able to fly almost right away out of the same facility uh, indicates that I don't think we did as thorough enough job, which would have been cratering the runways. And somebody will say, well, then they can fill in the runways. Yeah, and we can crater them again, too. <laughs> Do you think the administration did anything to encourage this behavior by the Syrians by saying that the Syrian people would determine Assad's fate uh, and that uh, removing him is not a priority, things that were said before the use of chemical weapons? I think it probably was partially uh, to blame and, I, and uh, Secretary Tillerson basically saying the same thing after kind of contradicting himself and then 
saying the same thing, argues vigorously for a plan and a strategy. As I said again, t taking this action I support and was important. Uh, but we've got to have a strategy and a plan to follow through. Just a one-time deal is not, uh, is not going to be productive, and saying we are only going after chemical weapons areas uh, ignores the enormity of the problem. A very small percentage of the people who have been slaughtered in Syria have been slaughtered uh, by chemical weapons. It's been done by barrel bombs and indiscriminate killing and all the other war crimes that, that have been uh, committed. A domestic question to end, Senator. Uh, the Senate got rid of the filibuster for judicial appointees. You, in the past, had kept the Senate from going down that road. You tried again this time. There were no takers. What does that say about the Senate? The Senate, like the nation, has become much more polarized uh, in recent years, and I regret what we did. We have shattered, really, 200 years of tradition in the United States Senate. There were a number of senators that wanted to get together again, but it wasn't enough. And I think both parties will rule this day because now when it requires 51 votes, it will drive to more liberal judges when the Democrats have the majority and more conservative judges when Republicans do. And I'm not sure that's good for America or our judiciary system. Senator McCain, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me on. And we'll be back in a moment.